All right, Cincinnati, I uh, have with us today Cedric Pierman, uh, former running back with the Cincinnati Bengals and also now uh, current day high school football coach here in the Cincinnati area. And I'm excited to have him with us in the midst of all the crazy that's going on in our world right now. Uh, but Cedric's taking some time and I'm just going to have him kind of introduce himself to you and then we're just going to share a little bit. So Cedric, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, what's up, everyone? My name is Cedric Pierman. As Matt said, uh, former running back for the Cincinnati Bengals. Spent eight years there, nine years in, in all um, in the NFL. Retired now. Um, eventually, all good things must come to an end, they say. <laughs> um, so retired now. I still miss the game. Uh, love playing the game. Love, love my time uh, with the Bengals. Wish we could have won a lot more, but that's another story. Oh, we are. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> But um, I am married to my beautiful wife, Hagar. She's a med school student. Um, we're due June 9th for another child. That'll be number four. Um, we have twin girls who will be three this coming May, um, Ava and Izzy. And then I have a son who just turned four in February. His name is Emmaus, like Jesus on the road to Emmaus. I think that's about it. Yeah, so you played ball at uh, Virginia, correct? Yes, um, played football there at Virginia, graduated, um, got my degree in sociology, um, and uh, spent five years there. I was redshirted there, and I actually became a Christian while I was there, so um, a lot of good things happened when I was at UVA. Yeah, so tell us a little bit about the became a Christian while I was there. What, what did that look like? So I entered into UVA in 2004. Man, that's a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> in 2004, and I grew up my entire life going to church. Um, I was considered your typical kind of like church boy, but I just basically kind of lived life how I wanted to live it. Um, and just basically, uh, Jesus was probably more of an, a, like an accessory that I put on my life. Yeah. He was a part of my life, I would say, but he was, he was not my life. Um, if I could say a, a Christian term, Jesus is my life. Um, and uh, yeah, I just went through the first probably half of college, just kind of drifting along with the crowd. Um, I'm just, yeah, just living life how I wanted to live, thinking that I was a pretty good person, that I didn't do much wrong and that, uh, you know, I was a Christian, but I love my sin. And uh, I didn't love Jesus um, as much as I said that I did. Um, so it happened, a, a couple, a few things happened, a failed relationship, and then I got hurt in, it was 2007. Um, it was the sixth game, I think it was the sixth game of the season. Um, I went down with a devastating foot injury, and God really used that to expose my love for football, my love, that love that was more um, for football than it was for him. And uh I remember listening to a sermon in December 2007, actually down, uh, um, it was at our, our bowl game that we had made it to in Jacksonville, Florida. And I just remember <clears throat> sitting, listening to the sermon. It was actually a, um, listening to it while practice was going on, um, which was an interesting thing. And uh, I just remember listening to the man speak, listening to him preach, and he was talking about being a Christian in America, how that has gotten watered down and um, and how a lot of people profess to be Christians, but love their sin and love the world. And that was me. And that day I realized that I probably wasn't a Christian. Um, and that was a good thing. That was a good thing that happened that day. Um, and ever since that day, you know, my life began to change bit by bit that day after that. And, uh, here I am now, I'm still not, uh, where I ought to be. Um, I'm not perfect by any means, um, but I'm striving to follow Jesus and striving to love him above all. Yeah. So uh, for, fast forward 2007 to the time that you kind of started professionally uh, with the Bengals. Who, who were uh, maybe some coaches or other athletes or, or, you know, men and women in your life who really played a significant role in kind of helping to grow you and develop you not just as a football player but really as a as a believer in Christ as a follower of Christ um 
you're talking about after becoming a Christian? Yeah, so from 2000. Post, post college, yeah, or post post college. Um, yeah, so um, I will I will say um, while I was in college, we had a. Uh, and you didn't ask me to say anything about FCA, <laughs> but we had this <laughs> FCA director. Nice job. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At the time, he was uh, uh, FCA, um, Mike Alley, who was very instrumental. He was um, the team chaplain for, for, the, for Virginia, at Virginia for the football team. He was very ins inspirational, and help, inspirational in helping me um, as a Christian in my walk, but also getting out there in high schools and in the community and actually sharing my faith and speaking. So he was instrumental in, in that. And then I had, a um, there were a few brothers in the faith on the team at the time who I sort of just linked arms with and just began to walk with and began to live life with. And that was very helpful to me. And then when I got into the NFL, my first year, I was kind of on my own. I was a rookie. I got released. I got drafted to the Ravens. Um, I got released after preseason. Um, after training camp so I didn't get to I got to establish a, a little bit of relationships there but I was just that ended so I went off uh, the next team I went to I think was was Cleveland spent just a couple of months there um, there was a team chaplain there by the name of Tom Petersburg who was very instrumental in my life at the time um, but uh, who I you know still keep in touch with it here and there even until this day um, so after getting released from Cleveland, all in the first year, I went to Detroit. So I was bouncing around. So I really didn't get to, I had few relationships um, that uh, I could really dig into and really develop with other believers to strengthen, you know, help me strengthen my walk in my first year. But God was gracious during that time. Um, and then in 2010, I got to Cincinnati and I spent eight years there. And uh, I was... I was able to develop some meaningful relationships, some some guys who, uh, even though I'm not playing anymore, I still keep in touch with. Some are playing, some are not. Um, just uh, Vincent Ray for the Bengals, uh, a guy by the name of Ryan Whalen, um, who played for the Bengals as well. And two of my um, two of my best friends while while we're playing together, we we're roommates, and uh, yeah, it was awesome being able to walk alongside those guys who were hungry for for Jesus the same time that I was um, so I'm really thankful for that yeah that's great so talk to us a little bit like everything's kind of crazy right now um, sports you know pretty much shut down right uh, we got the draft coming up Thursday which is exciting um, tell us a little bit may maybe actually just talk about that a little bit like take us all the way back to uh, to Cedric Pierman's draft day and uh, what that experience was like. I mean, I'm sure you remember it like it was yesterday. So talk to us a little bit about that. Well, um, I just remember being just very nervous about where I was going to end up, just worried that my family couldn't get to games and wasn't, wasn't going to be able to see me come to the stadiums and see me play. They were always able to do that while I was at Virginia because I'm a Virginia, Virginia native. Um, so I was just worried about where I would be. It's like, am I going to be all the way on the West Coast? How is that going to work? You know, I'm not going to be down south or somewhere, you know, but uh, I ended up, I remember getting the call from Ozzie Newsom, who was the general manager for the Baltimore Ravens at the time, and speaking to him um, about being a Raven. And I think uh, I got drafted. Well, I know I got drafted in the sixth round. I, I guess that was, it's a little bit different now. It was, my, I think that was maybe day three. Um, I'm not sure what day. I can't remember what day they do the sixth round on, but I just remember being somewhat kind of disappointed that I went as went late you know I was thankful I got drafted but I thought that I was going to go a little bit earlier and I thought I deserved to go a little bit early I mean everybody thinks they deserve earlier <laughs> if, if they don't go number one right yeah. <laughs> um but uh you know I understood why why I went where I went you know I had a, a devastating foot injury um I wasn't that productive as a as a redshirt uh, senior at UVA, dealt with some injuries there that year. So I kind of understood why, but I still hope for better. Yeah. So looking back at that now, I mean, even removed from football, I mean, do you, you kind of, you kind of alluded to it, but I'm sure you see the hand of God all over that, like, you know, getting drafted by Baltimore, 
kind of getting passed around a little bit, ending up ultimately in Cincinnati and spending the bulk of your career there. I mean, are you able to see kind of how God had this this plan for you and how that kind of unfolded uh, from draft night all the way up to kind of where you are now? Yeah, um, I remember. I remember getting the call. I remember 2010, the, the draft. And I remember I was with the Detroit. I was still with De Detroit um, coming up to the draft. I was at OTAs and going through all of that stuff. And it was going well. And I remember them drafting a player by the name of Javid Best, um, a running back from Cal. And I remember thinking, well, they're probably going to cut me because the running back room was already heavy. I was kind of the new guy on the block um, still. And, yeah, just – I think a few hours later, they said, you know, we're going to release you. And I was just devastated. Like, I was not ready to leave again and go to another team. You know, it was in the off season, so I wasn't sure where I was going to get picked, who was going to pick me up. And I remember being at the Senior Bowl, the Cincinnati Bengals were my coaches, you know, months earlier, getting invited to the Senior Bowl and playing in that. And I just remember um, coming away from – you know, that senior bowl was like, I don't think Cincinnati would be a good fit for me. <laughs> I was like, I don't want to go to Cincinnati. I don't want to get drafted there. <laughs> and full circle, get in to end up. And once I found out, my agent was like, uh, the Bengals want to sign you. Like, I, I don't even know what my face looked like, but I, I was in tears because I didn't want to go. <laughs> I wasn't ready to leave, but it ended up being the best thing for me. To, you know, the Lord knows best. You know, if anything can, anyone can gather from, from my story is that, hey, the Lord knows what is best for you. <laughs> you don't. <laughs> yeah. And that's honestly such a good word for everybody right now. It's just, you know, hey, we don't, don't necessarily understand everything that's happening right now. None of us certainly asked for what's happening right now. Um, you know, there are seniors in high school and college who've missed out on their senior season. Um, wow. Lots of crazy things happening, but understanding, right, that man, God sees such a bigger picture than we do. And God's got a plan in all of this. And we just got to kind of trust him and really lean into him. The Bible calls that abide in him. Right. You know, understanding that, you know, he's going to work all things together for good. Not that all things are good, but he's going to work yeah. all things for good. And mm -hmm. um, so talk to us a little bit about that, like the role that your faith plays in kind of your response and your family's response to this COVID-19 stuff. Well, um, uh, I think uh, I think for us, and I did a uh, a short devotional just uh, last week for uh, a local church. Pastor asked me to do and um, see if I can remember what I said. <laughs> um, I was talking about three reasons why you can have peace in a uh, in a pandemic. You know, peace isn't the word that is on people's minds, particularly right now. It's it's sort of panic. You know, people are going through a lot of things that um, are new for them. Um, and are, are foreign to them. Um, you know, we live in America, um, you know, where we're free to go and do as we please, as we do what makes us happy, we do what we want. I mean, that is not the case right now. A lot of people are out of jobs, you mentioned. I just imagine, I can't imagine being in high school my senior year, and I'm not able to go to weightlifting right now, you know, um, or have missed out on track season. You know, something that I, I love to do. I can't imagine the pain and the, the heartbreak that athletes are going through right now. Um, but one of the things that I was talking about, uh, three reasons, you know, you can have peace in a pandemic um, is God is always taking care of his people. Um, and I use an example from uh, the example of King David's life, how, you know, David was constantly running for a large part of his life, I believe, running from his enemy. They were literally trying to take him out. And uh, in Psalm 34, 4, um, I think, uh, if I can remember the verse right, the end of it says, you deliver me from all my fears. Um, and I, I just think about David, how, you know, he was fearful at times. And in other Psalms, he says, Lord, I trust in you alone. You will deliver me. He has this, like, confidence in God. But there are other times where he's like, you know, I was fearful, but you delivered me. And yeah, we're fearful sometimes. Um, we have anxiety sometimes, but uh, 
if we just have pieces and just moments where we are fearful, I think that that's okay. As long as we're not always like that, we're all, not always, you know, about to lose it. Um, we have moments in our lives that are like that. And so I just tried to, in my devotional that I gave, I just tried to remind the people, you know, God is always taking care of his people. He took care of David in those turbulent times. And the same God that took care of David, you know, will take care of you and I, will take care of you, whoever's, whoever's going to watch this. And then the second thing I talked about was God is in control. You know, we have this this God, this God of the universe who spoke a word and flung the universe into existence um, just by a word and uh, sustains this world that we live in, uh, um, sustains the universe that we li live in. He knows about the most, uh, in the most remote jungle in the world where no one has ever been, an animal falls dead, he knows about it. You know, a hair on our head that falls out, he knows about it. And he cares about us and God cares about our, our situation. And uh, he's, in control of it all. Just because there is panic in the world doesn't mean that God is on his throne um, ruling over this world and he's panicking as well. You know, he knows all about it and we can trust that God is in control. And then the last thing that I talked about was, um, I just wanted to, to zoom the lens away from what's going on on the horizontal to what's going on vertically and that's Jesus. You know, Jesus, um, what Jesus has done for us by his finished work on the cross. You know, coronavirus and everything that that's brought about in our lives and in people's lives isn't the most devastating thing that's going on in our world, um, isn't our greatest enemy. Death is our greatest enemy, and Jesus has um, defeated death for us, for those who would trust in him and um, seek to follow Jesus and his way, who would take up their cross and follow him. Um, those people, too, can partake in defeating defeating death, not because of anything that we do or any strength that we have because we have none, but it's through trusting in Jesus and his finished work on the cross. We can have eternal life. We have a hope that this world is not the end, regardless of what happens here, regardless if I get coronavirus, it takes me out. I know that I have a heavenly home. Um, <clears throat> I have dual citizenship. I'm a citizen here in the America, but more than that, I'm a citizen of heaven. and you know, one day I look forward to being with my heavenly father and that's through Jesus. So that's the last thing that I did in that devotional, just zooming the lens on Christ and um, looking thing, looking up to Jesus rather than looking on what's going on. You know, so I know that was kind of lengthy, but um, yeah, just wanted to encourage God's people with that. You know, absolutely. That's spot on, man. I'm going to have you come do a devotional at my house. So <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's good. Hey, listen, brother. Um, we got some other things we're going to talk about kind of offline, but uh, why don't you uh, pray us out of this? Okay. Um, just pray for our city, pray for Cincinnati, pray for coaches and athletes, anything else you feel so led to pray about. Um, and yeah. then we'll wrap this up. All right. Yeah, let's pray. Well, father, uh, thank you so much uh, for your goodness to us in the midst of everything that's going on uh, just by the, the, the mere fact that we have breath in our bodies, Lord, that you are good to us. And uh, we praise you for that. I thank you for Matt, for his, uh, for his heart, for Cincinnati, his heart for uh, people to know you. And uh, I just pray that you will bless his ministry. I, play, I pray that uh, anyone who is watching, who will watch this video, I pray that they would be encouraged during this time. I know there are a lot of coaches out there who um, aren't able to coach, aren't able to meet with their their teams aren't able to encourage their teams. There are a lot of athletes out there who, um, who aren't able to do the things that they want to do, participate that, in the way that they want to. And I just ask for your peace to come over them. Just allow them to see you above all, that you are greater than sports, that you are greater than anything that they can put up against you. You are greater than that, Lord Jesus. And uh, I just pray that people would see that. Um, I just pray for... Um, don't know you during this time that you would use this time to uh to speak to their hearts and that you would uh make yourself known to them lord we praise you for what you're doing in this time in this pandemic and i trust that you will get glory for yourself in this and i uh, pray these things in the name of jesus amen amen hey thanks man really appreciate it hey thank you matt for uh reaching out appreciate it